everybody. Steve from the Pinball Room. Oh, all right, hold on, hold on. Before we get there, quick interruption. Got to give another shout out. We've had some more patrons that have come in just over the last day or so as I'm getting ready to get this video up. Um, we'll get back to it in just a second, but man, huge thank you to everybody. Particularly, I want to give a shout out to Steve and to Brad and to Lord Huron Pinball here. And then extra super duper uh, to the super jackpot member, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Don't touch that thing. Thank you so much, guys, for your pledges, for all your support. Um, I love the suggestion we had in the last video talking about this. Every patron that comes in, we're going to get your initials or your name, whichever way you prefer, into the software here for Led Zeppelin. So it's going to be in the credits, it's going to be rolling. So I start taking around to, um, to TPF next year and everywhere else. We're going to make sure that it gives a, uh, a shout out to you guys for all your support. Um, not just from Patreon, but for everybody who's been contributing with ideas and thoughts. Like, it's all fabulous. But yeah, if you want your names in here, that's going to be like the, that's the perk, I guess, for being a Patreon member for right now. Maybe we'll come up with other better ones too. We'll see. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, guys. All right. Enough of that. Back to the regularly scheduled program about drop targets and drop banks. But just want to say thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Coming at you today to talk about this Stern four bank drop target opto assembly mechanism that we're putting inside Led Zeppelin. This is like the final mechanical piece that we have to get figured out for the pinball machine. I've probably said that a couple times before, so I guess I'm becoming a liar. But I, this really should be our last mechanical thing we're figuring out. I've had this in here, but I had never got it wired up because I was having trouble getting the board to be um, um, to be interpreted correctly by MPF. I could not quite figure out how to how to configure it. I was having trouble getting the optos. They just were always saying they were um, that they were closed no matter what I did. Well, I figured it out. So this is the board that's on the back of this um, drop target set. Okay. And it's got pins on one side, right? That we need to have our, our header connectors go in there, our wires, and they correspond over here. On the back, Stern has been nice, and they have labeled this, right? As any good manufacturer of a circuit board should. And let's go from the top down. First, we've got a five volt. Then we've got two ground pins. And honestly, the way these traces are, both of those ground pins are going to the ground lines of all the optos. I'm not sure if it matters exactly which one you do. I went ahead and just did the, um, the ground right next to the five volt line. Figured it made the most sense. Again, I'm not sure exactly why there's a second ground. One of you who's probably way more smart and understanding of and knowledgeable around circuit boards than I might be able to clarify that in the comments. Please let us know why there's a second ground. I'm, I'm not sure if that's just for like kind of somehow maybe connecting to another board in a, in a series or... Anyways, but there's two ground pins. So I'm using the first five volt in and then the first ground pin for my voltage coming in from my, uh, from my pinball machine, for my power supply directly. Don't need to use a fast opto emitter board for that. That handles 12 volt power for other optical um, switches. These ones, kind of these all-in-one guys here are different. This is all set with the right resistors and everything on the board to work with five volts. All right, carry, carry on down. Then we've got switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four, because there's four optical switches. And then we've got STB. Honestly, I have no idea what STB stands for. Um, and that was what was throwing me off for the longest time while I couldn't get this to work. I assumed STB, well, I didn't know what it meant, but I was kind of thinking, well, maybe that second ground pin, maybe that's really for the switch ground that we, you know, collects them and, and sends it back. So I tried connecting onto there and just nothing happened. It just always said the switch was, was, um, was open and, and nothing was going on and, or closed, I guess. And I just couldn't get to register. And I kind of had forgotten about the STB thinking, oh, maybe I should try that. And I just had kind of given up, said, I'm going to move on to it. I don't have time for it before the show in Portland. And so we didn't have this working at the show in Portland. And then, against all better judgment, I now have an aftermarket board, board on here because um, I fried my board. Because as much as it says five volt in, and I know that I should only ever connect five volt in, for whatever reason, because all other optos run off 12 volt, I thought, well, maybe if I run it through the uh, fast opto board with the 12 volt um, filtered power, I don't know. Even when I did it, part of me was just kind of screaming in my head saying, what are you doing? 12 volts definitely not going to work. But I think I was just so tired and frustrated and figured, well, it's not working anyway. I connected it. Well, yes. Now it definitely does not work. That board is gone. Um, even after changing the wiring around, now one of the switches is blown. Actually, three of the switches were blown, and the fourth is the only one that's working anymore. And anyway, so I could have either gone through and, and replaced a bunch of things on here. 
It was cheaper just to go through pinballparts.com. Is that the name of the website? Pinball Replacement Parts. This is a little card I got in the mail. Pinballreplacementparts.com. I found a nice, uh, a nice person, a gentleman, I believe, who's gone through and created an aftermarket version of this board that is totally compatible and works with it just great. In fact, I even like it better because it has um, LEDs here that light up. When you get power into it, they turn red and they have to do with the, the state of the drop targets. So when the drop targets are up and everything's working, you've got um, everything's red and as they drop down, they turn green to show that the beam has been broken and so it's just kind of this extra confirmation that things are working how they should. Anyways, reasonable price. I believe I got this for a hundred bucks. Um, and yeah, it's working great. So. If you're needing parts from this person, I recommend them because I got it quick and fast and it's just as advertised and working solidly. So anyways, all right, back to the real point of this. Don't burn out your boards. Make sure you only put the, the, the voltage that is required for them or else you will cause damage. All right, so STB. The acronym I came up with that is switch to board is the way I'm gonna remember it. That is how the switches get connected back to the board. That is the ground line that you need to connect back to your IO board so that the MPF software and fast hardware can go through and, and work with it and interpret it, the, the signals correctly. So now you understand what these labels are and what they mean and how you wire them correctly, right? So it's pretty simple. We've got here now our header. I've got red and black, red for my five volt, that's for my ground. I've got the switch inputs and then I've got for the STB, the final pin, another black wire that I'm using for grounds to come back into my IO board. It's been working just fine. Now the other side of this, which I really like, as this has kind of this nice quick disconnect for the coil. It's a normal high power coil. There's no diode on this one, but there's never any hold power, so it's gonna work just fine. We do not need to, um, to add a diode necessarily for this one. And then I found a similar connector. And I got this, I believe, off of McMaster car, but I'm gonna double check and I'll put it up on the screen here. Um, but I found a good, um, a good resource to be able to go through and get a lot of different pin connectors. I've been using them for the harnesses for my upper play field, if you, if you remember that. I've got some 12 pins, some nine pin connectors. And I got this three pin connector that's the right size. And I got the receptacles, the plastic receptacles, plus then the actual pins and sockets that you are gonna crimp onto the end of your wires. And then we can just connect this right in and it gets power and everything works great. We've got this set to where there's four drop target or stand up targets right behind it. So we've got a like a four plus four pair there of drop targets and um, stand ups that are going on. And we're gonna use that to spell the word Zeppelin. Z E. P, P, and then E-L-I-N on the back stand-up targets. I want to go through now and talk a little bit more in the config of the code, how you actually go through and config a drop target bank. Because in MPF, MPF you go through and you're gonna, you know, we've talked about how to declare and config a single coil, how to config the switches, but now we want this to be considered a drop bank, which is a type of like ball device inside Mission Pinball Framework. And the importance of doing that is, basically we're gonna go through and define each one of these drop targets as their own individual drop target, right? So we know when one is up and one is down, okay? So we can control things based off of that. But then we're also gonna go through and defining a drop target bank is basically just a way of grouping these all inside a single thing that then we can also track the status of the group of them. So we can say, oh, is the drop target bank, are all of those down? And if so, should we then reset it, okay? And get those back up. Or is it in a state of being incomplete and only some of these are down? And so we're gonna wait until they're all down before we reset them. And then we also are gonna be able to control this bank and this coil to say, you know, okay, when do we want this to reset? It's going to allow us to have more flexibility in how we interact with the drop target bank with the different game modes and rules. Be able to say, you know, yes, certain things happen when, the, when a switch gets hit. Maybe something else happens after all four together have been knocked down as far as points or modes that, that get enabled, events that get fired inside the code, et cetera. All right, so we'll hook this back up. I'm gonna show you the, the lights so you can see that because I think it's kind of cool and nice with this board to show off how that works and how MPF inside its dashboard is gonna go through and show you, right, the switch is going up and down. And then we'll take a second to go through and talk about how we have this configured inside MPF. There we go. So I just wanna show you how this board looks right here, right? You can see that? So we've got red and green lights for each one of these switches because it's down, showing that the beam has been blocked, okay, which is like green is good. And then as we go through and we reset this, you know, we can even go one by one, they turn off. The green turns off, the red stays on. Okay, so we know that they're all still working and functioning and as they go down, the lights turn green. Okay, all right. And then 
We're going to try to get my screen set up. You can see that and the drop target bank. So now we're going to start up MPF. And again, my stepper motor is connected. And so I have to hit my homing switch because my stepper is going to run. And it reset itself. And that's because I have this defined as a drop target bank. And so when MPF goes through and starts to initialize itself, it goes through and makes sure all the drop target banks are reset. I'm not sure just how well you can see that. I'm trying to zoom in right now. But the things that are green are switches that are basically uh, being tripped right now. All right. Several of these are just optos that I have disconnected right now. In fact, almost all of these are optos I have disconnected. But if I hit like an inlane switch, you'll see that starts to, these are starting to light up here. And as I go through and do the drop targets, they're going to be up here at the very top left here. Number one, number three, number two, number four. And once they get reset, they get cleared. Okay? It means they're working great. All right? So everything's set. We can go through and do all these. It's going to reset. Now what I need to do is go through and add code to tell it when I want it to reset. I don't want it just to reset every single time you finish the bank. I want it to come back up. But we'll get to that. I'm still figuring out exactly how to put all that together in game modes, okay? But there you go. It's working. Everything's in place. We got good confirmation for the LEDs here underneath on that board. I'm really liking that. You know, when it's got power, you know, if one's gone bad, you need to replace an opto. Everything's working great. Here we are inside the code here, inside our main config file, our core config file for our project. And the very first thing we need to make sure we do with any ball device is we have the coils defined. We're going to go to our coils section here, all right? And then we're going to go down until we find, we need to make sure we have an entry for our four bank um, the coil. I'm calling it C four bank drop reset. Remember, it's a reset coil, all right? We've got it assigned. Make sure you have that, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you designate with the number of the board and the coil driver position. Default uh, pulse, I had to put mine at 25 to get it to pull up the push up the drop targets. You always want to set your default pulse really low and then just slowly increment it until you get it to the value that works. You're not over firing your coils. Okay. And then from there we need to go down into our switches. If you hadn't added if you have not added switches for a drop target yet, make sure you're adding for all of those drop targets. So I've got here mine is four bank drop up, uh, drop one opto, drop two, drop three, drop four. All right. And the number of the switch where they're in where they are on my IO board. And then you normally always want to have this type NC line here for normally closed. Optos, again, remember, are a reverse of physical switches. They're always closed when they get tripped. Is basically when they, that connection is broken, and so they are then opened. Now, for whatever reason, um, the way this setup on this board, that was not working for me. That was reverse. I need to actually remove that line on mine. I still haven't figured out exactly why. So it's most likely that you are going to need to leave in. Definitely start with the NC for all your optos. And then for some reason you're having issues and the way I knew this when all four drop targets were um, were down MPF would never try to reset the bank but when I reset it manually it kept firing the reset coil thinking they were down even though they were up and as soon as I knocked them all down it stopped trying so for some reason the way this is set up through this board they're coming across um, backwards from way most of them are so maybe Stern has something on the board to kind of correct for that automatically versus them doing the software I'm not sure maybe the aftermarket board I'm using has its stuff backwards I don't know but for me once I commented those lines out then everything started working just fine okay so we've got our coil we've got our switches and then down under our ball devices I've got a section called drop targets okay and we've got them here I've got my four bank drop one drop two drop three drop four listed out here I have their corresponding switch which we just were looking at to find up above listed in here okay and then we got another section called drop target banks. Okay, and mine is just simply called four bank. Okay, now inside that, you then go through and you define which of the drop targets from your drop target section are you grouping into what's called a bank. You want to go through and list out here drop targets. You list out then now the the name of the drop target. So up here I had drop bank one. So down here I have four bank drop one, four bank drop two. 4 bank drop, 3 drop, 4. So I list out all the drops. Which reset coil? Is there one reset coil? Are there multiple coils? Maybe there's two. Maybe these are individually controlled, but I want them to be reset all at the same time. For me, it's just a single coil. Again, it's the coil that we defined. Okay. And then once those tar drop targets are completed, do I want to reset it? Now I could comment this out if I did not want that. If I wanted to wait for a, a specific like event to do that, 
Right now, I just have it set to yes. After one second, they will reset. Okay, that's the absolute like, most basic way of doing this. All right, so that was very quick. Nice short video, short and sweet, but I hope it made sense. I think it's fairly straightforward. You're gonna go through and define your coil. You're gonna define your switches for every one of those drop banks, right, for those optos. Or you gotta have a mechanical switch on other drop targets, right? But this one has optos. And then you need to go through and define a drop targets section in your config file and list out each one of those drop targets. And then, since this is a bank all grouped together and they're reset together, I'm gonna to be managing them as a group. I then add a drop target bank section to my config name that the drop target bank mine's this four bank and then you list out the drop targets and your reset events and your um, reset coil and there you go from there we now have a four bank drop target uh, bank that we can reference in our game code and say hey if that drop target bank is complete we should do x thing it enables a mode it gives you points it completes a uh, completes a mode etc we'll be able to start figuring all that out okay let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Um, anything that you think I just got glaringly wrong, we need to correct, please point that out also. I'm not the expert, I'm learning as I go here. Um, but so far, that's what's working great for me in my machine. I hope it works great for you. All right guys, once again, thanks so much for watching. Short and sweet this week, but um, hopefully we're gonna start making some progress on our code here before too long. I'll follow back up in the community tab and let you know once I've got something scheduled for a Q&A. Love to have all of you join me so we can start working on the game code together, all right? I've got some ideas. I'm gonna throw out there. I wanna share with you guys, bounce them off you, see what you think. And then if you guys got other ideas, I wanna just kinda of collect them all, try to process them. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I gotta figure out how to do it on YouTube, but if we can figure it out, I think we'll be able to figure it out. It should be a lot of fun, all right? Until then, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't started your own pinball machine yet, what are you waiting for? Like, get on it. You can do this, all right? We'll do it together. Thanks, everybody. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.